Now that we've completed this topic, you should have a better understanding of how nuclear reactors, such as this one at Anstow, and nuclear power plants work. Let's put everything we have covered together into one coherent picture. We started by looking at what an atomic nucleus is and what it contains. We saw that energy can be released in nuclear fission and in nuclear fusion. We looked at different forms of nuclear radiation, alpha, beta and gamma radiation. We discussed the different properties of these types of radiation and related it to their applications. We considered a number of medical applications and some common everyday applications, such as in smoke detectors. Next, we considered how power plants work. We built upon your understanding of electromagnetism and introduced Faraday's law, which tells us how a changing magnetic flux can induce a voltage difference and hence a current in certain situations. We saw that in a nuclear power plant, a changing flux through a loop is converted into electricity. This changing flux is often produced by turning a turbine which turns a loop of wire in a magnetic field. The turbine is often turned by rising steam. In a nuclear power plant, we saw that the heating comes from the nuclear fuel. This can be carefully controlled with control rods, which ensure that we don't have an uncontrolled chain reaction by keeping the reaction rate constant. After that, we had a look at how we can get electricity from the power plant to our homes. We looked at the advantages of AC power with a transformer over DC power, which can't be transformed. I hope that you've enjoyed this topic and has given you an appreciation of some of the benefits nuclear reactors have in our society.